welcome to Active Aging. My name is Danielle Procopio and I'm your host. Today I'm very excited to introduce you to Dan Early of Early and Sons. Uh, Dan works with uh, Early and Sons and they handle moving and all kinds of things that go along with it. And I'm excited to talk with you a little bit today about how you might be able to help our viewers, Dan. Yeah. Thanks, Danielle, for having us. I appreciate it. Of course. So um, tell us a little bit about Early and Sons and how did you get started? Uh, well, well, our company is, um, we help with uh, seniors. Um, we're senior move coordinators where we help with the downsizing, um, moving, um, we help with packing, you know, the floor plans, and then we also help with unpacking and setup of the, wow. of the new location by hanging pictures, making the beds, putting all the dishware, um, knickknacks away, um, hooking up electronics. A little bit of everything. Yeah, making it, it making like. it feel like home. <laughs> yeah. So this way, when they come into their new new place, it's all ready to go for them. They don't have to worry about all the boxes and you know trying to get those pictures hung and. Perfect. One of my favorite things about Early and Sons, because how long have you guys been in business now? It'll be eight years. Eight years. So uh, yeah, January. so we've known each other for eight years then. That's yes. crazy. Yes. Um, but when you hear the name Early and Sons, you know, it sounds like maybe it was your dad because you're so young or oh. but tell everybody how the name came about, because that's one of my fa that's one of my favorite things about Early well, and Sons. Well, Early and Sons is, um, of course, Stephanie and I, and then it's for our three boys, Danny, Joey and Zach. And our son, our oldest son, Danny, he's already, he's graduating next year. So he's oh, going to wow. be, he's ready to go into the, the business. He wants to be part of it. And he's already worked past two summers with us. Perfect. So, yeah. But I, I think it's so cool that you and Stephanie decided to leave that legacy from day one of with the intention of the boys getting involved. Because then he would have been in, what, elementary school, middle school when you guys got started? Yeah, uh, yeah. middle school, right? Yeah, yeah, he's 17. So, yep. Uh, he, he was 11. Yeah, so, so it's just, I, lo I love that you put that out there. And now right. here we are eight years later and you guys are doing really well and the boys are getting involved. And, yes. Uh, it's a true legacy. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So um, I know that we, Shepard, we've worked with you with plenty of our clients that are both coming to us and leaving us. Um, and one of the interesting um, collaborations that we've done with you is we did our downsizing seminars. Yes. And so uh, we've been able to kind of bring you and talk with the community as well as our residents about some ways to prepare for downsizing. Um, so I, I want to talk a little bit about those services uh, and kind of what you can do with that today because I, I think it's evident that everybody knows you can move. You can mm -hmm. load the truck. Right. And we can we can move the couch, but like you said, there's so many other bits and pieces to getting ready for a move uh, that you guys participate in, and I'd, I'd like to, to explore that a little bit more. So, what does that look like, Dan? Where where in the downsizing process can you and Stephanie and your team get involved? Well, we come in and we sit down, you know, with the homeowners, and we help them determine as far as you know what they're looking to do um, if they're moving into you know Shepherd, you know, retirement communities. Mm -hmm. um, and their children um, only have a certain amount of time where they can come in. Um, and they've been in their home for 40, 50 years. We can come in and help them determine what they want to take with them, uh, what they want to give to donation or any you know, charity of their choice, sure. um, and what they even want to set aside for their kids uh, and grandkids. Because um, a lot, of it's just so overwhelming. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the attic and the basement, the garage, you know, all the rooms are full. Right. Um, but unfortunately, you know, now it's a lot of the stuff kids don't even want, grandkids, you mm -hmm. know. So that's where we come in and we can determine, um, you know, taking the stress off of the family, you know, determining what they want to keep, um, help the, fa uh, the family with those situations. Yeah. So. Um, and one of the things that I learned when we talked a little mm -hmm. bit about that is that you really do it soup to nuts. Yeah, so you right. come in and you pick up each item and we talk about it and then you either pack it or you dispose of it or you guys coordinate also the donation piece. Right. Yes. Yeah. We can help with, um, you know, like I said, we call them staging areas where we get the areas set for the kids mm -hmm. um, donation. Um, we, you know, if it's just completely, they it's unusable, we get rid of it. Yeah. Um, and then also too, we pack it up so they can take it with them um, to their new home. Um, 
and that's where, we, like I say, it's it's there's a lot of work involved because um, mm -hmm. you're going through drawers. Um, oh, absolutely. Like I say, um, attics, and <laughs> so they, a lot of them haven't even been in the attics for for years. You sure. Know, even decades, you know. So yeah. uh, they say, "Well, I forgot about that," you know. And so it's <laughs> a lot of new things that they get to see. Um, so yeah, it's it's interesting, you know, doing the downsizing because mm -hmm. you get to see a lot of different things and hear a lot of stories. Oh, I bet. A lot of cool um, history. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Well, I know I've only been in my house for 10 years and I know how much right. stuff we have accumulated in 10 right. years. And, and anytime my husband talks about us moving or looking for a new home, my first moment of panic is who's going to pack all this up and right. how am I going to get it all out? So I can only imagine um, once I'm ready for retirement and I'm at that point in my life, how much right. more I don't want to say junk, but stuff, how much right. more stuff I will have accumulated. So, um, you know, I, it, it has to be helpful for people that are trained and skilled to come in and kind of help get through that process of just even, like you said, kind of just moving things into staging areas and where it's right. going to go. Um, one of the suggestions that your wife, Stephanie, had made at one of our downsizing seminars, and it's probably one of my favorite tips I've heard um, about moving ever, is she said that sometimes you have a piece that is real important to you, but mm -hmm. maybe no one wants it. Or, um, you know, it's come to a point where you're ready to donate it or you move from on from it. And if you want to keep that memory, you can take a picture right. of it. Yeah, And it's so simple, but it's silly that none of us have thought about that and to pass that advice on. But right. I, that's one of the things that, that Stephanie said that's always stayed with me. And I've told so many people since then. Um, and I think that that's a, that's a great way to kind of hold on to sure. the piece without actually physically. Yeah, right. It. Yeah, you make a little photo album of your Hummel collection. Yeah. You know, you keep your, some of your favorites. Um, but yeah, we've done that before too. You take the pictures and then you put a little album together. Mm -hmm. And this way they have it with them because, yeah. um, you know, they might not have the room at their new place. Right. Um, seeing you with all the knickknacks. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, you take the pictures and they can still have the memories. Right. So. Um, and I think that's a really great tip, um, you know, because everybody downsizes in a different way. Right. Um, and I'm sure you've seen that where you've got people that are moving from large houses to condos or mm -hmm. from, you know, a residence into more of a senior living community. Mm -hmm. And you're right. The sp when you're downsizing, that, they're, that word's intended for a right. reason. You're going to a much more limited space. And we've had I've worked with um, residents recently when they've moved and they're having that difficult time of how do I leave my stuff? And we, we did, we said, our friend Stephanie told us, take right. pictures. And so they've brought those with them and it really brings them a lot of comfort that they can still see those things that are important, even if they don't have the room for them, right. um, you know, in their, in their new space. So what a, what a great tip. The other piece that I know Stephanie and you had told me um, that you, you do too is sometimes you help families maybe after a loved one's passed. So maybe we weren't downsizing, there was an unexpected um, death, and now the kids are kind of trying to deal with the house. Yes, getting it cleaned out. Right. Um, right, yeah, we help with the clean outs. Um, we come in kind of same long lines of the downsizing, but again, we come in uh, helping the family go through what they want to keep. Um, what they want to donate, mm -hmm. um, get rid of the, you know, the unwanted items. And then we have the handyman services where, you know, if they want to list the home, mm -hmm. um, we can help with, you know, painting, doing um, small repairs, electrical, light plumbing, um, those repairs around the house so the realtor can come in, uh, get the pictures taken. So, um, Perfect. yeah, and, and also too that uh, Stephanie and I, we come in, we do the free estimates. Um, we meet with the homeowner, see what services they're looking for, mm -hmm. and then we're the ones also, too, that do the work. So we're not sending in, you know, a bunch of strangers after we meet with them. Right. Uh, we build that relationship with them, um, and Stephanie, she's sitting with them, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, going through items and helping them determine yeah. what they want to keep and so on so i think that's that's one of the other most remarkable things about your company is i remember when you told me the day you told me about the handyman services that was a feature that you had added at that point in time that was a couple years ago now yes. and so i was like that's so great who did you partner with who's the handyman and you're like it's yeah. me yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> jack I, of all trades uh, i love it well yeah that's because we were finding when we first started um danielle that we a lot of people were saying well do you know somebody that can do this right and, and I said, well, I, I can help you with that. And they said, really? And so, you know, loose door, you know, replacing um, a light fixture sure. or, you know, re you know, loose hand doorknob or something, mm -hmm. you know. And I just figured, well, 
why can't we just add this into our services, mm -hmm. you know, where we, these people aren't stressing, you know, they already have enough stress on right, them. Right, absolutely. Where they can figure out, well, now who do they have to call to, mm -hmm. you know, get that doorknob fixed or. Right. Uh, so, yeah, we started adding that services. Uh, it's about three years now, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Keeping you busy. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I and in all honesty, I think that's one of the reasons that Shepard has such a great relationship with you is that, you know, unfortunately, Stephanie couldn't be with us today. She was supposed yes. to, but, but there was some illness at home. Yes. Um, but you and Stephanie are very easy to work with and talk to. And I think a lot of people relate to you and trust you. And we definitely trust you. So, um, you know, to know that they're going to you and you're kind of an all in one package, they're going to, you're going to handle everything from the coordination of the move to getting the house ready for the sale, to getting you to the new place, to yes. unpacking. Um, there's a lot of comfort in that I yes. think, for families. Right, yeah, and, and like I said, we're move, we consider ourselves moving coordinators. So, you know, if we can't do it ourselves, we mm -hmm. have the contacts to know that we've used many of times in the past to help get the, you know, that um, certain item or need, right. you know, filled for them. Um, but yeah, we'll, we take care of it all um, from, like you said, start to finish. Yeah, uh, so, or individual pieces of that as right, well. Right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. If you just would need, you know, packing of fragiles. Mm -hmm. You know, we've done that many of times, okay. um, and they already have their mover set. You know, we've gone and done that. So, um, helping just with the downsizing. You know, and then yeah. they have their kids and family members helping with the packing. Um, so yeah, whatever they need done, you know, we can help them. It's good. It um, keeps you busy. Yeah, and we're with the Better Business Bureau now. You know, been with the Better Business Bureau for several years since we started. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, fully well, insured good. and yeah. So yeah. All, all those details. Yeah, right, yes. Yeah. Yep. Well one so. of the other things that um that really makes Early and Sun stand out is you're also involved in the community. Yes. Um we always appreciate that you support our Valley Legacy Awards and I know that there's other there's other parts and pieces uh that you're doing and other organizations that you're supporting out there too. So why is that important to you and Stephanie? Uh, well, we try just to be, you know, we want people to know that we're a family-owned company, um, we're local, and, you know, we just want to be out there in the community, um, you know, let them know that, you know, we're here to help them, mm -hmm. you know, and, and be there, you know, for when they need services when it comes time for their move. And, uh, yeah, we just feel that that's, you know, it's part of us, you know, because we're, like I said, a family. Mm -hmm. And it, we're trying to make it as a family business, so, yeah. Good. Thanks. I'm going to ask you this a couple times, Dan, so okay. forgive me. Um, but I want to make sure that our viewers know how to get in touch with you. So yeah. if I'm in the process of moving or if I'm trying to clean out a house or uh, maybe I need handyman services, anything in that continuum there, how do I get in touch with you? Oh, they could reach us at 330-501-7004 or earlyandsons.com. That's E-A-R-L-E-Y-A-N-D. SONS.com. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I did spend a little bit of time on the website, which I've been to before, but I wanted yes. to revisit it today to, to make sure I didn't miss anything. And one of the things um, that I that really stood out to me between that and your Facebook page was some of the great reviews that you guys got. Um, you really have a lot of people that loved working with you and loved your services. Um, and it seems like you were a really important part of that journey for them. Um, so, you know, that speaks that speaks a lot about the company and it says a lot about what you guys do and how important you are, you know, for those that are going through the, the downsizing slash moving process. Yes. So, yeah, thank you, Danielle. Yeah, I appreciate of course. It. Yeah. I only speak the truth. Yeah. <laughs> they can go on the internet and see this as well. Right. So, uh, it's not just me that that's saying this, that's out there. Um, is there anything that you guys are planning to change in the future or are you kind of stick into the wheelhouse of the moving and, and the downsizing and the packing? Do you see yourselves adding any other services as of now? Uh, right now, um, we're, you know, pretty much, you know, what we're doing is, okay. you know, um, but we do have a few things, you know, we're kicking around for ah. maybe down the road. Okay. Um, but nothing definite just yet. So. Sure. 
Well, as we've to... watched the services evolve over the years, I, I was going to say, I'm sure there's yeah. other things that we can expect coming down the pipe yeah. then. <laughs> yeah, we do have a few ideas, but we'll just have to <laughs> We'll have to keep, see, keep posted yeah, on that, right, keep yes. calling and seeing what's yeah. going on. <laughs> Um, so a lot of our viewers um, are in the age range where they're starting to get ready to downsize or maybe they're dealing with uh, having to get a house you know, cleaned out. So what are some tips that we can tell them? What are some things that maybe they can have ready for you before they call so that it makes your job a little bit easier and kind of helps you guys know what direction to go in? Well, we always try to say is, you know, try to start, you know, if you know you're going to be moving eventually mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to have to downsize, we will always say try to start at least you know, a couple months prior okay. to the actual move date. Um, if you know you're moving, say, in February, you want to maybe try to start in the October, you know, just you know, so you're not stressing yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just take a little bit at a time every day. Uh, go, we try to tell our customers, you know, take, you know, start with one room, take one room at a time, you know. Sure. Uh, just go through it and, and see. And if it just becomes overwhelming, you know, it's you just stop, you take a break, mm -hmm. um, and then go back at it again the next day or, you know, a few hours later. Mm -hmm. um, but the most important thing is, we always say, is try to start early, you know, not like a week before you want to move. Sure. And <laughs> so that leads me like, into a, a great, I guess, a great question. So if you're telling us to start a few months out, you know, um, typically how long does it take you and Stephanie to do a move and to clean out a home, like how was I know obviously based on size, it's going to be all different. But I guess yeah. what, what what kind of time frame should we expect? I that mean, to take well, they've the I mean we've taken from you know, again like you said, Daniel, on size, right. it's taken a week, mm -hmm. you know, up to you know a little over a month. Oh wow! So. So the house is where it's taken you as much as, you know, a couple of weeks to a month. Is it the sheer size or is it the amount of stuff it's, that's in the house it, or Well, both? it was both, to be honest, because mm -hmm. um, large, you know, we've done some large homes and where sure. the people, you know, they Not were hoarders, you mm -hmm. know. So, I mean, it, but it wasn't bad, yeah. but it was just a, a large amount of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, the family member had passed and yeah. those families have, where they were living out of state, you know, mm -hmm. so... It was, yeah, a lot of, um, just a lot of content, so. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good to know that, that, though, as well, is that if I do live out of state and mom, you know, passes or dad passes away or something happens where I need to get a house organized and cleaned out, that's something you guys, yes. you know, can do. Um, and I'm sure that brings a lot of peace of mind to those relatives that are out of state to know that there's someone that, you know, is able to kind of get it under control. Right. At least initially. Right, yeah, that's, like I said, we've done a few of those, you mm -hmm. know. We're via email and over the phone. Sure. We're doing a lot of and uh, FaceTiming. So. <laughs> Isn't it amazing what technology yeah, brings right, to the table? Yeah, it's like uh, you're, you're right there with us. Right, you know? exactly. You can just FaceTime and say, what are we doing with this right. here? What do you want to do? That's fantastic. Um, and, I, and I think that, you know, technology, a lot of times with the senior population, I don't think people give our seniors enough credit. You know, even in our facilities, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, you know, the internet, this, or FaceTime, that. I think my seniors are more active on Facebook and probably right. more active on their cell phones than anyone would expect or that you would think. So, um, you know, technology's really brought us far. Well, to be honest, I've learned a few things from some of our customers oh, on, see? you know, how to work my iPhone. And I, I was it. like, boy, I never even knew you could do that, you know. I know. So um, I'm always trying to, because <laughs> I, I would get frustrated there. And oh, they sure. said, yeah, you know, you could do this. See? And <laughs> See? So, yeah. I know, we, um, we, we've been looking to do technology classes and bring uh, for the community at Shepherd. And so um, our residents don't necessarily feel that's a, good, it's a big benefit because right. I think they're already ahead of it. So, but it's amazing when you think what we're able to do with technology, sure. even in your field, you know, as compared to like five, 10 years ago, there's so many ways that we can connect with residents and connect with family members that aren't home uh, and aren't here in town and able to kind of help them be present during the move. Um, so I think that that's a great point. If you are out of town, you can still kind of keep an eye on Dan and Stephanie via right. FaceTime if yes. you need to and see what, what's going on out there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, we are not at that point yet for downsizing, you and I, um, but we have probably have people in our lives that are downsizing. And so um, for any family members that might be watching, what are some advice that you can give them to help mom and dad or your aunt and uncle or neighbor 
to kind of get that process started? Because that's a hard conversation, I think. Um, so what, what are maybe some tips for the, the people that are trying to help those that are downsizing? Do you have any suggestions for us, Dan? Well, yeah. well I would just say just, again, just um, talk with them, um, be patient. Mm -hmm, um, because we, we see that a lot too. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, the kids getting upset, frustrated, mm -hmm. or the parents frustrated with the older, mm -hmm. you know, their kids. Um, but yeah, just be patient, um, bring it up to them, you know, just in a, you know, a gentle way. Mm -hmm. um, and just say, I would just say maybe we could just start tackling a, a room together, right. you know, one by one. Um, so this way, you know, when you're ready to move mom or dad, this way you're not all stressed out, you know, mm -hmm. when it comes time. Um, I, I know it's, it's a touchy subject, so uh, because, oh, definitely. you know, 56 years in, in a home, you know, and all your personal right. belongings. Mm -hmm. um, I know <laughs> I have my things that I like at home and it's <laughs> like, pff, I don't know if I want my kids to say, hey, right. you know. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I, and I so think... I, I know what you're saying. It's, it's yeah. just... I don't know, like I say, it's just very, my best advice is just being gentle, mm -hmm. you know, sure. and patient. Yeah, I, and patient, I think, is you know. really hits the nail on the head because I think regardless of where you are in your life, when you have to make major changes like that, you know, moving is a is one of those major yeah. life changes that brings on right. a lot of stress. It's right up there with divorce and death yeah. and change and job. And I think that, um, you know, for any of us that are going through a move, you have to be patient, not mm -hmm. only with the others, but also with yourself. You know, for those that right. are downsizing, um, I think you, you have to be patient and realize you got to do it in your own time. Right. Um, you know, the way that it works best for you. And I, and usually when you're in these kinds of situations, family always means well and your loved ones yep. always mean well to help, but it, sometimes it doesn't come across that way. Right. Um, and I think that that's sometimes a place where you and Stephanie can be a great buffer to kind of maybe help be the intermediary and kind of help navigate the situation for everybody. Yeah, and then a lot of times in, uh, we say a neutral set of eyes, you yes. know, going in there, <laughs> um, you know, taking a look, just giving our opinion. Um, it just, it helps, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, you know, kind of calm the situation. Sure. Uh, but I was just going to say to touch back on that point of being patient with mom and dad, when they're ready, they're, you know, they're going to do it, right. you know. Um, you bring it up to them, they're not ready exactly at that moment, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't mean they won't ever do it because they will, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's hard for them to cope with that too, you sure. know, knowing that they're leaving their home for all those years into a new environment, so. Right. Absolutely. Well. It's a, it, and change, again, change is hard for everybody regardless. Yes, exactly. Um, and I, I know that with some of our residents, when they've come in and they've had to make those decisions, sometimes uh, their loved ones have started maybe with a room that they're not living in, you know, like with things that have been there for a long time and try to start with some of the older stuff, which can be the stuff that takes longer mm -hmm. to go through. Because like you said, it's like a whole new world in there if you haven't seen those items right. for a long time. And then kind of starting in that space before you go into the space that's maybe being lived in. Right. Um, are there any uh, tools or suggestions that, or maybe um, products that you guys have encountered that have worked really well? Like if you've got someone who's got a lot of photos maybe or a lot of books, any any suggestions you can make for that? Because usually that's what we run into is we're seeing a lot of old photos and just the mass amounts. Think of how many photos you, know, you would take over the years, right. especially prior to our digital cameras. Um, do you guys have any suggestions on how to manage those and, and where those might go? Uh, well, if the photos, you I mean, if we try to encourage, you know, family to take mm -hmm. the photos because if they, right. you know, mom, dad can't keep those photos yeah. anymore, don't have the room, we always try to encourage a family member to at least take them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, if, if none of the kids are interested in them, then that's where it becomes kind of tough. So right. we try to, then we say, get some Rubbermaid totes, there you, you go. know. Um, put those into totes, uh, mm -hmm. and in this way, uh, put those into either, you know, storage, or if the kids or someone have room at their house, you know, just to store them. Mm -hmm. So this way, if mom and dad want a photo album to look back through, or right. you know, down the road, the kids might be like, man, I should have kept that that photo album. They can go into that tote, yep. you know, and label it. You know, um, you know, your. We try to also categorize the. The photo albums, you know, if it's mom and dad's wedding anniversary or, yeah. you know, 
gym grow, you know, from j growing up or gym's high school years. That probably makes you know, it a little bit to, easier because yeah. if you have 60 years worth of photos right. that you're trying yeah, to you're put away, through, you right. get a little bit overwhelming. Right, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, and then you go to those totes and say, oh, there's my photo album. I want to see, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah it's, that's it's we, we've we've done that in the past. So, yeah, we try to recommend that and mm -hmm. encourage family to take those photo albums yeah. versus just getting rid of them. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. So, right. Yeah, I know... Um, I've had family members where I have a large family, so we all might want the same picture. And so like we've resorted to a, a lot of times going, then making the photo, uh, having a digital copy so that we can yeah. all share them. Um, but that's not always a good solution for everybody. So, but I know that's, that's, that keeps becoming a recurring theme with our residents that I've noticed is that one of the hardest things to part with is those photos. And it's sure. also just, there's so many. Right. So, um, so the rubber made totes and make sure that we get them somewhere that there's access if somebody wants them later. Yeah. And, and, and try to label them too, the, those totes. That's a huge. So, you know, yeah. just kind of an idea instead of having like you said, you know, Danielle, a mm -hmm. whole big stack of right. miscellaneous photo albums, try to keep them somewhat of order <laughs> into are, those totes. Are there any other items that you and Stephanie have seen repetitively during moves that, um, you know, like the that photo issue that you keep seeing some of the same similar items that maybe are, I don't want to say problem items, but items of concern? Um, well, China, mm -hmm. nobody wants, you know, China. They're, yeah. they're even hard, you know, um, at, at auctions and, mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's sad because there, you can't even find that stuff anymore. Yeah. You know, six, you know, hundred year old China, oh, eighty wow. year old China. It's just a lot of kids don't want it. Yeah, um, that's a and, shame. And a lot of thrift stores mm -hmm. aren't taking it anymore. Mm -hmm. Donation sites. Um, so that's where, again, we say if you know if you really want it, you know, we put that into the totes. Mm -hmm. We pack it well. Yeah, and we just put it into their you know, their areas of storage and that. But that's another problem we find, which we find it hard to believe, you know, because mm -hmm. that's stuff you just can't find no more. Right. So. And I'm sure for the right collector or the right person, that would right. be, um, you yeah, know, wonderful. But not it's not an item that every home would probably want or, or need. So. Yes. Yeah, you have, you know, multiple sets of, you know, wine glasses and yeah. dessert plates and dinner plates and <laughs> it's sure just, it's seemed over. like a good idea when we bought it <laughs> right yeah yeah so um yeah so i'm imagining you guys are probably trying to find homes then for a lot of that right stuff. yep yeah. yeah we you know we'll have um you know we work with some auctioneers mm -hmm. we have them come in oh, uh, meet with the re the homeowner and you know just talk with them and see what items where they can get some money for these things mm -hmm. you know uh, antique items sure so um, that's where we find it important to where the, at least try to talk with somebody to, you know, if you can't keep it, try to get some kind of value for it. Right. So. Absolutely. And, um, I'm hoping all of our viewers appreciate the breadth of services that, that you and Stephanie are able to provide through early and sons. Um, and I think that, you know, you bring up a lot of great points and things that, you know, if you're not in the industry, if you're not in the habit of moving or, or cleaning out homes, you might not even think of like the auctioneer. So hopefully our viewers will, right. will take a chance and give you a call. And if they need some help coordinating a move, they, they'll think of my friend Dan here. Yeah, so. we greatly appreciate it and be happy to help them. <laughs> and Dan, one last time for us, if we need to call you, what's the phone number? It's 330-501-7004. Perfect. I appreciate you joining me today. Well, thank you for having us. Of course. You know, thank you. Of course. Well, I appreciate my viewers as well. Thank you so much for taking some time with us today and learning a little bit more about Early and Sons. Um, we will see you guys next month. I hope everyone has a great day.